Yeah, absolutely, Nina. Uh, that this is very important to God. You know, so you see uh, the heart of God. You know, actually, um, uh, when we see John three sixteen itself, you know, the fact that God so loved His creation, or um, you know, entire creation, but particularly the man He created, that we should not perish but have everlasting life. That's God's desire, and so He sends. His only begotten Son. He sends Jesus for this. For the you know that itself talks about you know the uh, how much he values um, a human being, um, even though sinful and so far away and rebellious, um, but he values uh, that person so much. And of course, in the parables in uh, in the in the book of Luke's we uh, Luke's gospel we see that uh, the really the heart of God going after that one. You know uh, the lost coin, or the lost sheep, or the you know the parable of the uh, the prodigal son. He's going after that one person, and then there's great rejoicing in heaven over that one person lost was found. So that is really the heart of God. And if you look at those parables, Jesus is actually uh, teaching those parables to people because they had this thought. You know, they said, you know, why is Jesus spending this time with sinners? Doesn't he know that they are sinners? You know, why is he spending time with all these kinds of people? And so he was actually revealing the heart of the Father through these parables. So, yeah, it is very, very important to God. And therefore, um, while we can consider the goodness of God, also the severity, you know, the goodness and the severity of God, the grace and the judgment, you know, both are true, both are scriptural. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's um, let's continue. Um, we are temples of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, if you look at 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, is another exciting verse which um, talks about the work of the Holy Spirit okay, in a believer's life. Okay, 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18. Okay, let me read it out. Okay, um, maybe 17. But the Lord, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, so so we see um, uh, this is an amazing verse. Verse 18 says, with unveiled face. Right, which means that um, you know it, it, the previous verses talk about how there was a veil covering the the Jews because every time they read the law they you know because they hadn't turned to Christ um, there was still that veil that was covering them that was not giving them that full revelation and that uh, it says that that veil is taken away in Christ verse fourteen okay we won't go into that but the fact is this when we look at the glory of God when we consider study the presence of God the glory of God who God is now this verse says that we are being transformed. Okay. We are being changed. Okay, who is being changed? We, every believer, is being changed. How? By the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, we are being changed into what? Okay, so that's a very important question. Okay, we are being changed by the Spirit of God into what? Can you just tell me? Sorry. Into a new man, okay. Just read that verse again, please. Second Corinthians three eighteen, yeah, yeah. So, what does that same image mean? Yeah. So you see that this is the possibility. Okay, this is what can happen to a life who is submitted to God. To a person who gives permission to the Holy Spirit to change oneself. This is what can actually happen. So it says here that we are being changed from glory to glory into that same image. Okay. So if you look at that, it says, um, we are, what are we beholding? What are we seeing? The first part of the verse, with unveiled face, 
what are we seeing what are we beholding just look into this verse the glory of god who god is the person the beauty the holiness the righteousness everything we are beholding the glory of god for the first time because our eyes are open you know we we can finally understand god our minds are illuminated right uh, when we come to christ now finally we can actually observe and see the glory of god and here it says we are being changed into that same image okay now that's that's going to take eternity to find out you know wow we are being changed into the same image so, so in, in other words he's not saying i'm going to change you to be like this man of god i'm going to change you to be like this woman of god right i'm going to change you to be like this noble person no he say i'm going to change you to be like god we are going to be changed into that same image of course we won't be changed into gods right because we are finite beings but into that same image like him christ likeness into the likeness of christ right and it is by the holy spirit now this is the this is the extent or the realm of possibility of transformation in a person's life okay so you might say you know that's it this is my limit i can't change i can't be more patient than this you know i can't be more holy than this you know i i can't i don't know if you ever said that to yourself you know, i can't be even more patient you know you've you've stretched me this is it right it's just getting on my nerves or saying you know i can't be even more holier or sanctified or i can't be or you say you know i can't do the things that the lord did he walked around in power so much power i can't do it right so we 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 come up with all those things and who puts those limits we ourselves or maybe someone else you know said this and said you know you are worthless you only this you only amount to this you only do this maybe you know and it's there in our mind as a limit as a ceiling right but this is what god's expectation is if we would but allow the transformative work of the holy spirit you know if we would say yes to his prompting if we would say yes to his leading you know he is willing to change us transform us it is it is not automatic first of all we need to know that we, we need to know that it is as we cooperate right like that verse that we read in romans chapter 8 if we put to death the deeds of the body by the holy spirit right by the holy spirit we put to death we bring to an end the deeds of the body we will live so this is a possibility it is not something fictional it is a truth of god we are being changed transformed into that same image from glory to glory by the spirit of god right i think we should say a hallelujah to that <laughs> uh i think you didn't hear me <laughs> yeah absolutely you know i think you learned in uh, praise and worship class now what hallelujah means right blessing and glory and honor and praise and you know hallel what does hallel mean praise and worship class those hebrew words hallel it's a shout you know it's a shout of praise and it's a very rowdy shout of praise you know if somebody scores a goal and if that guy is going crazy right he's going he's putting his t-shirt over his head and he's you know he's running and he's sliding and he's going you know that's the picture that's the picture you know he's like totally being joyful and excited and uh, not caring you know doing some foolishly foolishly you know joyful foolishly excited so that's the picture you know when every time that yeah sure sure go ahead so every time we see that word halal you know that's the root word right so that's we would be so if we read that you know sometimes when we say praise god uh you know i'm i'm sure you know it's not like he be forced something but that this is the picture of it when we understand when we get a you know um thing of the revelation of god 
Okay, Nina's going hallelujah with some with some exclamatory marks there, Nina. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely, you know, this is this is awesome, right? So which means there is hope for that drug addict if he or she would allow. There is hope for that person caught in pornography and you know in some deadly sin. There is hope if he or she would love. There's hope for that murderer. There's hope by the work of the Holy Spirit. And we've—I'm sure you've read testimonies of people whose lives are so changed that people are unable to, you know, even recognize them. Right? Their lives are so changed by the work of the Holy Spirit. Right? So, absolutely. Right? So this is this is exciting. He changes us. To be like him. So today, you know, don't put any limits. Don't put any limits on God. Don't put any limits on yourself, right? And say, Holy Spirit, you change me. You know, I'm going to say yes to you. You know, let me grow in the grace. Let me grow in the knowledge of Jesus. I don't want to put any limits and say this far and no more. You take me. You show me. Now, let Scripture be the, you know, uh, you know. Sometimes when we say no limits, we're not talking about going into error. Right? We're talking about let scripture, you know, be those milestones. Let scripture be those, you know, those those markers, those boundaries, and 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 so on. And let scripture estab establish us, right? But there's no end. Right? There's no end to, um, you know, what the Holy Spirit can do in us and through us. Right? Okay. Okay. Let's look at um, uh, uh, the the walking in the Spirit, or you know, walking, uh, uh, living a life. Where we are engaging with the Holy Spirit or allowing the Holy Spirit to work work in us. Okay, um, Romans chapter five and verse five. You know, recently uh, at a wedding, you know, I just, uh, kind of we we read that verse. Um, Romans chapter five and verse five. What does it say? Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, just read that again. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay? So what has happened here? Anybody? What has happened to a believer? What does this verse say? Okay. The love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit or by the Holy Spirit, right? Okay, what has been poured into our hearts? Okay, love of? So what does that mean, the love of God? It's not a trick question. <laughs> what does that mean, the love of God? The kind of love... That God has. Okay. The kind of love that God has. The quality of love that God has. Okay. So, what is the kind of love that God has? Agape. Right. So, the entire 1 Corinthians 13, you know, it describes that it's patient and kind and it's not prideful and all that. Right. So, that's the kind of love that God has for us because it says that while we were yet sinners, he died on the cross for us, right? And he demonstrated us on the cross. The Lord Jesus said, Lord, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing, right? So he demonstrated, it's not like it was just theory, but he actually demonstrated that, right? So that's the kind of love that God has for people, which means it's a unconditional love, okay? Unconditional love. Uh, which means that love is what you you could say it's a in spite of love. It's not a because of love. Now many times we say, okay, I love because. Okay. Oh, you know, I love you because you are so funny. I love you because you're so handsome. I love you because oh, you're so pretty. Or, I love you because, uh, you know, oh, you do these things for me. I love you. It's a because of love. Nobody says, I love you, uh, in spite of the fact that you slapped me. <laughs> That's not very common. 
you know, I love you. You insulted me. Oh, I love you so much. <laughs> you know, you were so rude to me that day. I love you so much. Nobody, nobody writes songs like that also, right? But the fact is, God's love is eh? in spite of love. Okay, so, so he says here, this in spite of love, this love of God, has been poured out into our hearts. So where is this? Where is this love? This love actually which comes from God. It, it is his possession. right? It is his property. And that has been poured out into our hearts. He's writing to believers. So as believers right now, um, Yeah, Nina. So, um, so where is it now for the believer? Sorry, in our hearts. Okay, this God's love, agape, has been poured out into your heart, each one into my heart, each one of our hearts. Okay, who brought that? Who made that happen? The Holy Spirit made that happen. The love of God had been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Then what's the problem? <laughs> right? If, if we have the love of God, then why is it a problem to love others the way God loves? What do you think? Anyone online? Just put your... What do you, what do you think? Mm hmm so we we are in possession of it okay but there is there seems to be some limit right uh, to express this to show this love in action right? now we get in revelation or we get an understanding but there seems to be uh, yeah the problem is us nina says okay the other nina here said <laughs> there are limits so yeah so there are limits there are limits because of maybe our ignorance there are limits because of uh, our own unrenewed mind right our mind is not renewed to the fact that hey i can't express it. there are limits because of our flesh because our flesh wants to hit right hit back right especially in bangalore traffic if you go you're going in a hurry and then somebody you know just crossing the road or you know they're coming in front of you and doing those deliberate things and it's not love that you feel for them right you you just want them to disappear off the face of the earth you don't want them to be there but um so you know that, that's the thing right so our flesh is a problem our flesh is a problem so that's why we need the holy spirit to put to death the deeds of the body we need the holy spirit to enable us to to actually wash us to re bring about that renewal so it's true in all relationships, whether it's marriage, whether it's at you know uh, uh, friends or colleagues or whatever. You know, it's true that if we need to love, as a believer, praise God, the Holy Spirit has brought this great treasure into our hearts. Okay, today, you and I have the love of God in our hearts, so we can't say, you know, I, I don't know. I think uh, my a grandfather was a you know short tempered person my father was a short tempered person therefore i'm also the bible also says we've been delivered from the empty ways of our forefathers <laughs> right? there's another scripture we've been, we've been set free from all those things so the thing is that we are in possession uh, yeah so when we don't submit to the leading of the holy spirit when we don't put to death the deeds of the body you know we will always be carnal believers you know we will we will say one thing when it comes to, you know, I'm not saying that you know overnight that we should be, you know, great super spiritual people. No, it's a process. We are walking with God. You know, we are walking in step with God. It's a friendship with God. We are walking in intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And as He leads us, we will find expression. You know, as we are being changed, the second the last verse that we saw, Second Corinthians 3:18, we are being transformed into His likeness by the Holy Spirit. We are being changed into His likeness, which means that we will be able to express this God kind of love, this in spite of love in our lives. And um, well, to a, to a large degree, uh, the New Testament church right, was like that. Right? When, we, when we read about the, some of the extra biblical uh, you know, um, uh, writings which are there, 
we see that they went through some persecution, right? They were thrown to the lions. And we read about instances where they would pray for the soldiers who were actually taking them to the lions. They would pray for their persecutors. They were singing worship songs to God. They were, they were worshiping God when, these, when they were approved in the face of danger, like when they approached by these animals, by these beasts, praying for the persecutors, praying for them, praying for their salvation, that they would come to know Jesus in the face of death. How is that possible? How can such a transformation happen? And these are people who are hardened, you know, who, who, were, who were not born like that. They were not just born and say, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> there were people like us, you know, with this in nature. But something happened. It was put to death the deeds of the body. There was transformation. So, yeah, I think there's a... Yeah, so um, Krishna's question is, why is it still difficult? Yeah, so it's not easy, uh, Krishna, definitely. So we have the possession, we have the love of God, but for the love of God to be expressed to others, you know, it definitely, the Bible does not say that it's going to be easy uh, because you're putting to death, you know, death is painful, right? You're, you're bringing to an end, you're actually killing something that has been part of you, um, or, you know, it could be learned behavior, it could be, uh, you know, this is how you always, or, you know, I should not say you, but all of us, you know, this is how we've always reacted to somebody putting us down or somebody, you know, we, we've reacted this way. Now, this is how it, it has been. So bringing an end to that is not an easy thing, right? It's not an overnight thing. It's not an easy thing. It is difficult. And uh, therefore, it is by the work of the Spirit that we put to death those things, you know, put to death those desires. You know, when we say things of the flesh, uh, most times we think about sins of the flesh. You know, we're talking about, okay, adultery or whatever. But actually, this, these are also about the flesh you know, when it comes to wrath, when it comes to anger, when it comes to malice, envy, everything, bitterness. You know, these also are, you know, are works of the flesh. And so to bring those things to an end, you know, it's not an easy thing. It is a painful thing. And, uh, but it is something that is possible. Yeah. So, so all we talk, we're going to be learning about conquest of the mind. Um, uh, Probably next semester, I'm not sure. But if you look at, um, you know, if you look at transformation, very quickly, I'll just say this, you know, uh, transformation, uh, first and foremost, we, we embrace our identity, who we have become. That's a, the first step. You know, as long as we keep saying that um, I'm only human, I'm not capable, uh, I'm only just like the other person, you know, we, so we're not going to be stepping into the reality of, you know, uh, possibility, right? So, um, what is possible as laid down by scripture. So we need to embrace our identity. We need to embrace who we have become in Christ first and foremost. Right? Second thing, we need to embrace the work of Christ on the cross. You know, what did he do on the cross? There was a great transaction that happened. Right? We need to embrace that, the truth of that. He took our sin. He took our sin nature upon himself so that we might be you know, delivered from. So we need to embrace that. Third thing, there is also renewing of the mind, right? So Romans 12, 1 and 2 talks about that, where we are renewed, our mind is renewed. So when we, and our thinking changes, when our mind is renewed to the truth of God's word, our behavior changes. Many times we are trying to fix our behavior without fixing or changing our thinking, right? So the more, you know, if I'm thinking about revenge, if I'm, if I'm meditating about revenge, if I'm thinking about lust, if I'm thinking about things, then my behavior is going that same way. My body is going to follow through. You know, if I'm thinking about revenge, kind words are not going to come out of me. Words of forgiveness are not going to come out of me if my mind has been completely overwhelmed by thoughts of that. Right? So renewing my mind. So even when those thoughts come as symptoms, I put to death and say, no, this is who I am. You know, I'm a child of God. I've been forgiven and I have the capacity and the ability to forgive. So renewal of the mind. And the fourth thing is, of course, to walk in the spirit, being led by the spirit of God. I mean, these are four. I, I'm sure there could be more, but these things would help us, uh, you know, if we would embrace these things or put to practice these things, that there will be transformation. Right? 
transformation, radical transformation in our lives, in our speech, in our behavior, uh, everything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's also um, uh, in addition to what Nina shared on the chat. Um, like it's also not the time frame. You know, it's not like okay, I spend extended time and then you know I need to do something in that time that I spend with God. So um, yeah, I hope that helps. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on. Walking in love, right? So. Um, uh, the next thing, you know, is uh, I think we, we looked at some of these um, uh, keys here. Um, let's look at Galatians 5 and verse 16. Okay, Galatians 5 works, verse 16 talks about if we walk in the Spirit, something happens. Okay, Galatians 5 verse 16. You know, Paul says with utmost certainty, you know, this revelation, just declaring this truth. I say, walk in the Spirit. And what, did he say? what does he say? Yeah, if you walk in the Spirit, then you're not going to do this. Okay. So I think we just need to find out what is this walking in the Spirit and walk in it. Right? If somebody is stuck, if somebody is finding it very difficult, you know, uh, about, you know, just being completely taken over by the lust of the spirit, lust of the flesh, and all that. As a believer, this is the key: right? walk in the spirit. So, knowing the Holy Spirit, being acquainted with the Holy Spirit, being intimate or having fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and daily walking, living our lives. You know, when when you say walking, it means conducting our lives, right? It could be simple things, it could be complex things, decisions. We make decisions each and every moment, yes or no? Yeah, sometimes we think and make. Okay, Today I think I'll have coffee. Uh, today I think I'll have tea. You know, you think, premeditate. But certain decisions just happen like that, right? For example, when somebody throws a ball, okay, you just catch it as a reflex. Or somebody comes to poke you in the eye, you know, you just, you hit, you protect. And it happens in a split second, right? It's it's not even thought of, but your mind actually just goes into rapid, you know, all these thoughts and all these impulses, and then your body, you know, just mind tells your hand, just cover your eye, something is coming uh, to poke your eye, just do that. Just imagine if that would happen, right? If that would happen every time that there's a suggestion to sin, is it possible? What do you think? See, just like if I throw something at Rinchen, Rinchen would either move out of the way or you know protect herself, right? Imagine if you do that, the minute if we do that, the minute there's a suggestion, you know, you say, Oh, I'm just going, I'm not, I'm not going to even do that. Right? So the thing is, it's part of walking in the spirit. It's part of walking in the spirit. Where our mind is so renewed, our mind is so uh, renewed to the truth, our mind is discerning, right? Things saying that, hey, this is dangerous, this is healthy, this is not, right? And we do that all the time. You know, we maybe somebody serves some food and, hey, this is smelling a little different. Uh, did you keep it in the fridge or was it outside? Oh, it was outside. Oh, I, I, I think this is this has gone bad. You do it. You know, physically, we do it. And spiritually, we also need to do that as well, right? When it comes to our, behavior, our own thoughts, our own motives, our own attitudes. No, I don't think I should, I should, you know, have this thought. I don't, I don't think I should have this grudge. Um, you know, I don't think I should have this resentment, right? As a righteous reflex, not even a response. A response, you're thinking and doing something. How about a reflex? What is a reflex? What is reflex? So, an immediate, unplanned, you know, not premeditated. Okay, let me see here. Uh, automatic, right? In a split second, you know. Sometimes, you know, you. How many of you watch the T20 uh, match? Anything? Anybody? No cricket fans? Okay, cricket. So you see, you know, uh, some some of these uh, catches which happen, you know, I, I forget which match, but anyway, 
you know it's it's like amazing right he didn't even think about it it was a split second he just moved he caught it it was a reflex so you know i'm just praying god give me a righteous reflex i don't even sometimes i don't even have time to think about these things but give me a righteous reflex you know whenever there's a suggestion whenever there's a you know push a heavy pressure right to do the wrong things god give me a righteous reflex right so when we walk in the spirit you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh okay this is a reality this is something for us to rejoice in this is something for us to enjoy and walk in and say i'm going to be victorious i'm going to walk in the spirit i'm going to find out all that you know what is it that is walking in the spirit i'm going to spend time with the holy spirit i'm going to get acquainted with this voice with this speaking with this hearing and i'm going to obey right and sometimes what he says will be very old fashioned <laughs> sometimes what he says will be very very you know very difficult not comfortable but then you you go by the wisdom of the spirit oh you know something more than me god and therefore i will obey right okay then what else do we see we see that in uh, let's move to galatians 5 and verse 22 okay just, but i just want to encourage you to read through the rest of the scriptures as well we are already in galatians 5 just go down to verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, or long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. Okay, fruit of the Spirit. Now, anyone, what do you understand? Fruit of the Spirit. Fruit is full, no? Hindi mein? Huh? Okay, so what is the fruit of this? What does it mean? Uh, so, uh, tell me again, Richard. Sorry, sorry. Uh, tell me again. Repeat. Okay. Walking in the spirit. Outcome. Result. Okay. Outcome. Result. Uh, a result of walking with him. A result of living our lives um, in step with him. Right. Okay. Um, any thoughts from the online class? Okay, so this is it. That uh, the fruit is, you know, the the outcome, the result, the end result. We would say, you know, the the maturity that the Holy Spirit brings, and you see the qualities that He brings into our lives. But the fruit of the Spirit. Now, when we read through the that that portion, right, uh, sixteen onwards, you see that um, Paul is talking about walking in the Spirit. And you will not gratify the things of the flesh. He says, these are the works of the flesh. And he's writing this thing, fornication, adultery, and lewdness, sorcery, hatred, contentions. He's writing about all that. And then he says, hey, but the work of the Spirit is. You know, you see that verse starts like that, right? But the fruit of the Spirit is. But the fruit of the Spirit is. Which means that, you know, he's just contrasting it with everything that is put there. And he says, this actually is the work of the Spirit. It has nothing to do with that previous list. It is an opposite of that. But the work of the Spirit is this. The fruit of the Spirit is this. So he is able to bring into fruition, into our lives, all these attributes, all these characteristics. You know, sometimes we might say, yeah, I have a problem with this. I don't have enough joy. You know, I, I'm always confused. I don't have peace. I'm restless. Or, you know, I have a problem with patience. I'm rude to people. I'm not kind. I'm rude to people. Um, you know, I've been unfaithful. Um, you know, there's no self-control. That's this one trigger. No self-control at all, right? So, if we have issues like that, right? Yeah. So, if we have issues like that, right? So, what is the what is the key? You no, know, the fruit of the spirit is this: the work of the spirit in our, in us, in the believer brings this. So, uh, so what should you do? What do you think? What should you and I do? Huh? What would you do? Okay, suppose I say, okay, this is the work of the spirit. 
what is your immediate, immediate reaction? What would you say? Okay, oh, that's good. That's nice. But what is it? What is it that you? I mean, I'm sure the response can be very different. But I just want you to share what would be your response to that. You didn't understand the question. Okay, so this is what scripture says. The fruit of the spirit is this. So what is your response to that? You know, when you hear that, what do you want to do about it? Okay, check where you're lacking. Okay, so that's what Prince says. Check where I'm lacking. Okay. And then Prince, beyond that, yeah, go ahead, Anand. Sorry? Equip yourself for... Okay, okay. So what you're saying is you you want this in your life. So um, when you say equip yourself, okay, maybe you welcome, right? Welcome the work of the Spirit. Mm. Okay, depend on the Holy Spirit more. Okay. Um, okay, we need to keep in step with the Spirit. Yeah, yeah. So the f f thing is this, you know, first of all, we acknowledge that, okay, the Holy Spirit is able to bring this into our lives, right? Holy Spirit is able to bring this because scripture is very clear. This is the fruit of the Spirit. This is the fruit, work, completion of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. So I just acknowledge that. Secondly, I invite, and I need to invite and say, okay, I, you know, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You're welcome to change, rearrange, Whatever, right, whatever is required, I need this. Right? So which means I'm inviting and I'm pursuing, I'm expecting. Right? So I'm not passive, in other words. So what does it mean to be passive? Brother, if it happens, it happens, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to chill and I'm going to relax. Right? Yeah, it's good to relax. It's good to be at rest, right? not be anxious and stirred up. But then to have that hunger, to say, God, I want this. I want this, God. I'm pursuing. I'm inviting, God. What is it? What is it that you want me to do, God? Do you want me to just receive? Do you want me to step in and do certain things? Like the Holy Spirit will give strategies. He'll say, okay, now you need to forgive. But God, anyone but that person. I'll forgive everyone, God, but not that person. That person... When we meet in heaven or this thing, we'll take care of it. <laughs> but God will say, no, 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 no. Today, do that. Right? And when you do that, you're actually putting to death your actually whatever barrier was there, whatever limit was there, whatever was, you know, uh, uh, hindering the work of God in our lives. We just, we just smashed it. And we opened the door, right, for... For the just the river to flow out, and and uh, so much of change happens. Yeah, right. So so that's the thing. The fruit of the spirit, right, which is really Christ likeness. Um, you know, the the attributes that that would actually you know change the world. People would look and say, these guys are not just talking good things. These guys are not just singing good things. But they are actually showing it in their lives. See, the world's thing is this: no, they talk big. These Christians, they talk big. They they, they also sing a lot of things. They sing a lot of lies. <laughs> you know, they say they're singing like, "Lord, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, Jesus, I'll do it, Lord. You know, I will live for you. I will die for you." You know, they're singing a lot of lies, right? But actually, when they see the change in the behavior. You know, that's what it says, you know, that uh, the Lord Jesus says that when they see your good works, they will glorify who? The Father, right? And the Holy Spirit has come to do that, to change us, right? To, to lift up Jesus, right? Okay, next one. Um, probably we'll, uh, we'll have two more, time for two more. Okay, 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 17, right? Uh, the verse that we read just before, um, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. What does it say? Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Okay, There is freedom. Freedom to be who God has created you to be. Okay, there is freedom. There is liberty. Okay, it, is, it is the opposite of bondage. 
and it is the opposite of slavery it is of opposite of being imprisoned right um, he sets us free okay. if you if you look at um, um let's say what, what the lord jesus said right when he when he received the scroll and he read from isaiah um and looking at luke chapter 4 right verse 18 what did the lord say he says um the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me Okay, Luke 4 and verse 18. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Verses 18 and 19. So he's saying this is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's how it starts, right? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me for me to do all this. Okay, so where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Okay, he brings freedom. The Spirit of the Lord brings freedom. So uh, when we see oppression or we ourselves, uh, you know, we, we feel that we are oppressed, we are weighed down, we seem to be imprisoned. Well, we just need to invite the work of the Spirit and say, okay, I don't have to stay in this place or with this frame of mind. Right? Because the Spirit of God brings about change. So the work of the Spirit brings freedom and uh, liberty, right? So He's the one who gives us freedom. You know, many times we, we experience that, right? Uh, maybe in corporate worship, right? Uh, we walked into the prayer meeting, we walked into church feeling very heavy. And somehow during, during that time, Right, of maybe prayer, maybe preaching the word, whatever time, you know, there seemed to be a lot of freedom. It was, you know, the, all those weights are li lifted and everything seems to have been, you know, we're feeling lighter. We feel suddenly we feel, like, oh, I, I wish I can fly. I can actually fly now. I feel so free. Right? That's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not some mental gymnastics that we did. We thought this, that, and then suddenly I'm free. No, that's the work, supernatural work of the. Holy Spirit, and where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty, there is freedom, right? Okay, now let's look at uh, uh, a couple of more things. We have, um, I think, five more minutes. Okay, let's look at the revelatory work of the Holy Spirit. You know, 1 Corinthians 2 um, and verse 9. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse, verse 9, it says, um, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ye heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I remember once when we had a Bible study, and then, you know, so somebody was, this person who was leading was asking this question, you know, so, you know, what is God's plan for your life? What do you think God's plans for your plan for your life is? And, and I remember one of my friends, you know, quoted this scripture. He said, you know, I has not seen, yet has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things that prepared. That is God's plan. No, I has seen nothing. I don't know. Nobody else knows, in other words. So this person who was leading, another friend of ours, he said, hey, why don't you read the next verse? <laughs> okay. So, so then we all, oh, for the first time, we were looking at the next verse. Ah, okay, verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yet yes the deep things of god so for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god so he's you know so the thing is this that yes i don't know you know we are in that place maybe saying i has not seen you know naturally i've not seen in my eyes it's not come to uh it's not a reality yet nor have i heard I'm not able to sense it with my physical senses. I can't see, I can't hear. Uh, and even in my spirit, you know, there's no revelation yet. I don't know. There's no prompting. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Whenever people ask, uh, hey, what do you want to do after Bible college? I'm like, oh, yo, I don't know. I wish you didn't ask me that question. You know, I, won't, I don't want anybody to ask that question for the next two years, three years. And probably at the end of it, I'll find the answer. You know, sometimes we are at that state, right? I, I don't know. But the thing is this, verse 10 talks about but the Spirit of God. What does He do? But God has revealed them to us. So He does the work of revelation. 
What does it mean to reveal? To show. Right? Something that is covered to show. He, he uncovers and he says, would you like to take a look at this? Why don't you take a look at this? Right? This is what I have planned for you. And uh, the other things, you know, I'm not going to show you now, but I'm going to show you anyway. I'll show you. Right? But this is what I've planned for you. This is what you know I've I've designed for you. Right? So he's the he has revealed them to us by his spirit. Right? So he is the spirit of revelation. Uh, scripture says he's the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So he reveals things, whatever God has prepared for us. So well, again, the importance of being acquainted with the Spirit of God, of hearing His voice, you know, being having friendship with God, right? Um, I, I keep saying, you know, friendship and intimacy because um, it's not a formula to know God. Right? It's not saying, okay, one plus one, okay, is equal to two. You know, okay, any other formula? <laughs> What is a plus a square plus b square? What is that? A plus b, the whole square, is two ab. <laughs> okay, one more formula. What is the <laughs> what is the square? Uh, what is the what, what is that? The Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to sum of the square of the other two sides of the right angle triangle. Okay, all those formulas we know. Formula. Well, the thing is, is getting to know God is not a formula. Okay, it's not a formula. We have some precepts, we have some principles, which means that, okay, what I hear, I check. You know, we're going to look at that. Uh, God is like this, so if it is something else, you know that's not God. So we have all those signposts, precepts, and principles. But it's a walk of friendship. It's a walk of friendship to know God. Okay, that's why we you know, keep going intimate with Him, being acquainted with His ways, getting to know Him. Right, so um, why did we start that? Okay, so he's the spirit of revelation. So he's going to show us those things that he has prepared uh, for us. Okay, many things. You know, we want to know. At some stage, we want to know who. Uh, I mean, what you want to do. At some stage, you want to know whom you, whom you want to marry. At some stage, you want to know oh God. You know, you know all those decisions, all those choices. Right. Well, God knows the answers. And he's not holding back the card saying, no, you can't see this card. This is, this is not, you know, suddenly I'll surprise you. No, um, he wants to reveal, he wants to show. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. We'll stop here. Thank you so much. Um, they continue to walk, you know, walk in the spirit. And um, yeah, maybe have a wonderful adventure, exciting adventure. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye-bye.